Our Freedom in Peril, Chapter 4. The Perpetrator. There are many things that are real threats to our freedom. Some of those things are visible and others are not. The visible things that threaten our liberties and rights are easily fought. And a visible victory is the proof of its conquering. It's the invisible things, though, that pose the real threat to our freedoms. And they are also the most challenging to win against. There are dynamic forces at work in all parts of our life. In fact, everything from the edge of our atmosphere to the core of the earth are intertwined and work together. Even our thoughts interact with the physical realm. One example of this would be the way someone is thinking about you that you are having an interaction with. You can feel a person's negativity about you. And not only your mind, but your body also responds to that energy, transforming our experience in the present. It's been proven in plant life that our interaction, even recorded human music, can impact both the health and growth of a plant. Slavery can be as simple as a person thinking negatively about you, resulting in not getting that job or raise. Based on a prejudice of race, sex, or anything else you can think of. We put each other into slavery in so many different ways. The important thing to remember is how we think is ultimately how we are. People have a way of making our lives heaven or hell. And the bad part is about this chapter. Perpetrators eye easy prey, and typically without any reason at all. White men in 1850 didn't have a reason to be disrespectful to slaves, other than because they could. Women, even today by many, are viewed as objects and not afforded always the reality of equal status. The year 2020 is not a year we see clearly with equality. It is a year where community does not exist. It is a year where discrimination and control keep other people down. Most times it's the covert and unspoken actions that keep people in a less than equal status. Having an unequal societal structure seems inevitable, so we must be conscious of it and do our best to ensure the most equal treatment for all people, because that is the way God has told us to treat each other. Everything on earth has its natural order to it. It's important that we try not to mess with it. Perpetrators are merciless, and in the 21st century, they can have real effect on people and do it all invisibly. It's not an in-the-head thing. It is a reality, much like a remote is to a television set. 
we have entered a new era and to preserve freedom for everyone we need to stand up to it in order to overcome it fear is the largest hurdle similarly fear is what perpetrators feast on creating in their target's life the more fear panic and worry they can create the more powerful and in charge in control a perp feels there is a very silent and sinister side effect that is more damaging than anything else the use of a technology that puts freedom in peril is a very chronic and severe case of addiction addiction to another person a person in control completely of another person grows to become fixated and obsessed with their victims and controlling their lives it is true that only a small percent of addicts in the world overcome the first hurdle in the grieving process denial those lucky enough to be brave and different behaving find a new freedom that exists in the fellowships and among each other i can't imagine as a controller what pain detoxing from thinking obsessively and compulsively over their victims would be like after being in charge every minute of every day there are multiple reasons why a media exposure of the weapon the technique and the destruction of all lives involved and connected to its use needs to be made clear people get wrapped up in the doing so much that instead of living their own lives they either experience someone else's projection or neglect their own in favor of controlling another it also makes everyone in the situation angry and mean we could very quickly turn the world into a very dark place delusional ideation a term i created in my first public writing they drove me crazy the beginning of my journal is a fabricated fantasy world of make believe and it's time or and it's true is not experiencing life and fulfilling god's purpose for the gift of human existence we should know better but the devil is tricky and will make you deny truth and live a lie instead so we must be very watchful and expect the temptation and do our very best as a civilization to further mankind not throw it back into the dark ages perpetrators often quite seriously believe they are just kidding and that's no joke a true disconnect with reality is that never being able to escape a flurry of words whenever a perp wants is probably the ultimate injustice to humanity on doors we have knockers and bells but entering someone's mind is not just rude it's just not right a perpetrator must know 
they are doing it. But whatever they think is a rude or not, or what, 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 whether they think it is rude or not, may honestly never enter their minds. They might have good intentions to start, but more often than not, they have disaster on the forecast. And the sky is more like Seattle than Los Angeles.